with the current Longhorns. Texas third ever meeting against BYU last night. Lost both meetings prior to this one. Longhorns trying to get to 2-0. They were remembering the 9-11 weekend. Fans chanting USA. Horns come out slow for a second straight week. Garrett Gilbert, well, unlucky and then some with the batted ball interception. Saw a few of those last year. Gilbert had the team on a drive, though, down six to nothing when second interception of the game. Gilbert had one more chance, but couldn't move the football, so Brian Arson makes the switch to Case McCoy. That's one of the things we've emphasized is the turnovers. Um, and we weren't off to the start we wanted to have, and so just needed to provide a spark. That, that's one thing I just had to tell them was, you know, we just calm down. We've been playing this game since we were all in seventh grade. Uh, who cares there's 100,000 people out there? Play your game, play hard, and I promise you, just tr trust it. Whoever, whoever's driving the wheel right now, it's not going to change. So it's back to McCoy driving the wheel, but... Longhorns were down 13 to nothing. Ross Oppo from the Dallas area actually decommitted from Texas a couple of years ago as a recruit. But then, well, the defense got inspired. Ashton Dorsey, the first sack of the season for the Horns, and that seemed to turn the tide. Case McCoy, first career completion. Hits to Darius White, who nearly lost the football. He picks up his own fumble. Longhorns couldn't drive there, but again, the defense stayed strong, and Adrian Phillips picks up the big interception right there, and the Longhorns start to move it. David Ash in for that Wildcat package, and how about DJ Monroe? This guy doesn't need much room. Monroe, he's so fast, he just runs right off his feet. Here, second half, first possession, Cody Johnson finishes the drive with a touchdown, and all the momentum seems to be going Texas's way as they cut it to 13 to 10. Mac Brown said he was having a ball on the sidelines, and the defense, they just locked up the BYU running game. That is DeLuigi. He went nowhere. 23 carries, 43 yards for BYU. How about this catch by Jackson Shipley? Are you kidding me? This leading to the second touchdown of the game by Cody Johnson. And just like that, Johnson trucking the BYU defenders. And the point after is good by Justin Tucker. Longhorns have a one-point lead still, though. Plenty of time for BYU. But the Texas defense on third and long heaps, heaves it. And Quandre digs. Hey, there's some bloodlines as well. That's Quentin Jammer's little brother with the interception. So the Horns can run out the clock. Third and six, and they bring Shipley off the edge to throw a pass to David Ash, the quarterback, who's lined up at receiver. So one more first down, and this thing is locked up, and this time it's just old-fashioned smash-mouth football with the true freshman, Malcolm Brown, once again leading the Longhorns in rushing. That one ices it. Longhorns win it. After being behind by 13, they win it 17-16 to get to 2-0. This is the same place we were last year at halftime against UCLA. We were down 13 to 3 and didn't respond well the second half. And the coaches were very positive. I was more positive than last year. And I thought the, the guys played as hard as they could and probably as well as they could the second half. This team wouldn't have won this game last year. And I thought that uh, the offseason program, the brick by brick mentality, the fact that they're pulling for each other. Last year we had some offense defense stuff. I thought that one would get frustrated with the other. Tonight it would have been very easy for the defense to get frustrated with the offense in the first half, and they didn't at all. Today has to give them a, a huge boost of confidence uh, that we so um, really needed because it's such a young team. And it built our confidence. Uh, uh, we were just talking about last year how we were in the same predicament going into, you know, the UCLA game, going halftime down 13 to three, and it was basically how were we going to respond to that type of adversity? And uh, obviously, uh, offense picked it up, defense was just held uh, on their end, and we just played a, a full four quarters of football. A real credit goes out to our players. I thought our linebackers and, and front guys really played well. They took it personal. We, we weren't satisfied, of course, with how we played last week, and I think they took that personally. And and uh, and now now we can start. To see the formula for our success. We just all came together, and it was good to see the offense come to our huddle. It was good to see us go to their huddle. And um, this team's really growing together. This team's taken a tremendous stride just as a team, like you said. And I'm just excited for the future and what it holds. One of the things Coach Brown tells us all the time is uh, age doesn't matter. And um, if, you don't, if you don't have the mindset that you're a freshman, you're not going to play like a freshman. So that's how I go into it, um, just not worrying about age and just trying to make plays. 
Of course, it is a storyline that will not go away. All the offseason talk about the quarterback battle. Four players battling for the starting job. Garrett Gilbert winning it, but unlike last year, this time he did get pulled in the game. Horns did win, but the talk will continue. Here's Layla Rahimi. Like the Roman Coliseum, the frustrated mob at the stadium in Austin had spoken in the second quarter. I thought the fans hung in there. Uh, they had some frustrating moments, but they pay tickets. Uh, they, they pay a lot for their tickets. I want them coming, and they can express their opinion. We'll never know if their opinion was exactly the same as Mac Brown's, but when Case McCoy took the helm of the offense, the feedback was positive. When Case came in, I think he, he played a real leadership role for us, and he immediately came in the huddle and was, and was pumping us up and, um, you know, telling us to trust him and that he's going to lead us down and, and he's going to bring us to victory. And, um, you know, I think there was just a, a, lot, a, a lot of energy um, that he brought in. He obviously made, made the plays he had to do to, uh, to help us win the game. McCoy was 7 of 8 for 57 yards, but more importantly, led the two scoring drives that gave Texas the lead. David Ash spelled McCoy and added 39 yards rushing. I think I have leadership. I think so does David. I think Garrett has a lot of leadership. Uh, it's just tonight, you know, our team, all we, all we asked our team when I walked in the huddle was to rally around me. Rally around me and, and have your confidence to keep playing the game you're doing. Uh, it's just, it's, it's like a game that we've been playing since in seventh grade. And, uh, and I think our team played well in the second half. We came back and we fought hard. And, and really, that was a big win for us. While the quarterback position was the most visible change in the win, Mac Brown stressed the importance of what the team was able to accomplish. Tonight was about this team. It's not about a person. It's not about the fans. It's about winning a football game at Texas the hard way with a really young team against an older team that came in here ready to play. That's what it's about. What a win. What a comeback win. And, and what a great thing for this young team and this program as we start to put it back together. Despite the uncertainty at quarterback, what the team says they found in their fourth quarter comeback was confidence. It's something they say they want to build on going into the UCLA game, which was their first loss of that fateful 2010 season. At DKR Texas Memorial Stadium, Layla Rahimi, KXAN Sports. All right, Layla, and at UCLA means on to the Rose Bowl. The stadium has been such an important part of the Horns' recent history with a couple of wins in back-to-back -back Rose Bowl games, including a national championship, but then, of course, two years ago, losing the national title to Alabama. UCLA 3-0 against Texas, including last year, that 34-12 shocker. By the way, Longhorns 21st in the coaches' poll, 24th in the latest AP poll.